Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to look at adding a link to JSON code and creating an adaptive card in Teams using JSON code, and also how we can get that code to create some text with that link underneath a submit button. And we're going to use ChatGPT to help us get that code. So we're in a test flow and it's manually triggered. And we have our action post adaptive card and wait for a response. And in our JSON code for the message of that action, we need to include some dynamic content here that we're going to pull from a Salesforce record. And the link that I'm going to create for this is also going to be a link that will take the user that clicks on it back to this flow so that the adaptive card, when it arrives, will know exactly which flow triggered that adaptive card in Teams. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is connect to Salesforce. So I'm going to search Salesforce in Actions, and I'm going to do See More, and I'm going to select Get Record. I'm just going to get a singular record. And for this example, the record I'm going to get is a, is a case. So I need to select cases as the object type, and then I need a record ID. So I'm going to grab a record ID and copy and paste it into this field. I paste the record ID into here, and I also updated the action name to note that this is a getting a case record. So now that I have that, I can use the dynamic content from this action in here. So some of the text that I'm going to update on the card will use dynamic content. So this card is going to include some details of this case. So down here in the text, we're going to use um, case summary, and then we will grab dynamic content and then we'll search for summary and put summary here. So that will give us the case summary. We're actually just going to, we're going to get rid of this one for this um, example. And I'm also going to remove this one here. We're going to just, for this example, we're going to make this a very simple card. It's literally just going to give us the, the case summary. We're not going to do anything crazy, but there is going to be a button. The button is already set up down here. So we have this text for the button, but the thing that we want to do that's not always straightforward to do in the adaptive card editor. We have these buttons here, but if we want to put a text block underneath there, we can't use the drag and drop to do that. We can plop it there. I can drag it over here. I can't put it underneath. Same with a rich, new rich text block. There's just no way to do that. So we would need to edit the JSON code in order to do that. And if we don't know much about JSON code, an option that we have is to use chat GPT. So what I could do is I could grab this code here. I could go to ChatGPT and I can say, please update this JSON code to include a text block underneath the submit button that says, and then I'm going to paste in my code and I'm going to hit send. So it says you should add another text block element in the body array after the action set. Here's the updated JSON code. So we scroll down to the bottom and we see what it has given us. Now what we can do is copy this code and paste it into here. I've already done that in advance. So I already have my additional code set, but let's take a look at it. So here we have our button here. So you can see the title is submit. And then we've added another text block underneath here where it says this action will submit your response. So really before we do anything else, let's test this code and make sure that it works. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to run a test. Take a look at the result. So here's the result in card. We have our case summary. We have our question and our submit button. They can toggle yes or no, and then they can submit. And here is the text that we added underneath that button. So now that we know this works, and we, I like that the format is nice and small because I, I don't want this to be a distraction to the actual card details up here in the button because this isn't something that would be used often. But this text, we're going to convert this into a link that will take the user back to the Power Automate cloud flow that created this card, the summary page of that flow or the overview page, whatever you want to call it. 
So let's do that. I'm going to go to edit. And instead of creating a link right here in this JSON code, I'm actually going to create the link in a compose. So I'm going to add a compose right before the card and I'll call this link to flow. Inputs, this is where we write our link. So for that, I'm going to save, I'm going to back out here and I'm going to grab this link. So I just grab the link up here. And before I go back to edit, I'm going to share this flow with myself because this is an apartment call that's using this. So if I share it with myself, then the link will work. Otherwise, in order for it to work, you may have to put this flow into a solution for others to be able to access it without being a co-owner. But for now, for testing purposes, we're just going to set it this way. Before I go back to edit, I'm going to really quick click submit on that car so that it stops this test from running. And if I hit refresh here, that'll be done. Now I can go to edit. And here's where I insert my link. Now that I've done that, I can go and work on creating my link here. Now links, creating a link in JSON, what you need to do. If you want the link to not just show as the text, of course, you need to put your text that you want to be hyperlink in these brackets here. So I'm just going to say link to power automate flow that triggered this. Actually, let, let's shorten it up here. Let's just say power automate flow that triggered this post. And then we also need to put this, close this out. And then after that, we put a parenthesis, excuse me. And then this is where we put the outputs of our compose, the link to that flow, and then close it out. And that looks good. So let's give that a try and see how that shows up. So let's save. Done. Now let's hop over to Teams and see how that looks like. You bring this over. And there we go. So this says power on me flow that triggered this post. And it brought us right to the summary page, overview page. So that's perfect. Works exactly as we want it to work. Now there's one more thing that we can do. So let's first stop this flow. So I'm just going to hit submit because that button does nothing for our test, except for closing out or ending the flow successfully. I'm going to go to edit. And what we can do is get the title of this flow. So we'll add an action. And if we search power automate, we might have to scroll down a little bit to power automate management. And we click see more. We can do get flow. So if we do get flow, we just choose our environment and then we select our flow. And this will give you all the list of all your flows in your environment. And the name of this flow is called test and it's post adaptive card with text under submit button. So we can select that one there and then we can update this so it's get flow and it's literally get this flow. And now we can go down here and we can change this text here. Power on me flow that triggered this post. Just put a space here and then dynamic content and then the, the flow display name. So we'll in, insert that and that will become part of the link as well. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is because if the name of this flow ever changes and I want to have the name of the flow mentioned that triggered the post. I want the name of the flow to be included in the card. Then it's dynamic. Otherwise, if I just type the text of the name of the flow and the flow of the name ever changes, obviously I would have to come back in here and I would have to update that. But by just putting in, by connecting to the flow and then using the flow display name, if the flow name ever changes, I won't have to worry about updating this. So let's save and we'll run the flow one last time. And we can see here is our card. Here is the link and it says power automate flow that triggered this post. And then here is the name of the flow. So now we have a number of different flows that post these cards. And I want to know the name and have a link to that flow that created the card. And this is a great way to do it. 
In fact, we can make our text small, text size. Also, we can make it smaller, uh, less noticeable. But the nice thing is that it's underneath the submit button. It's not in the way. It doesn't get in the way of what we're trying to draw the um, person's attention to. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you found all of this helpful. And as always, I will see you in that next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.